Um, you're quite because I saw there. what you're doing with the lid there. I'm like, ugh. The lid itself awesome. isn't that sensitive, yeah. but obviously the globe and the corner right, specifically right. is a little more sensitive. So it's really just for the patient comfort. Um, we've done it without, but most patients prefer it with. Um, once you've inserted the device, you're actually moving the device slightly away from the globe and cornea, so you shouldn't really contact it. But if you do just touch the cornea, the patient's going to recoil a little, so we like to have the anesthetic in there for the patient. Can you just go through and show me what yeah. you would do? Yeah, so you start by pulling down on the patient's lid and then just inserting the pad in behind the eyelid. Uh-huh. The patient's reclined slightly on the chair with their head against the headrest, so they're nice and stable. Once you've inserted into the fornix, you push forward with your thumb, and capture the pad between those two pads. And then when you've captured, you can lift up and out slightly just for patient comfort, move away from the periorbital bone and off the globe. And then when you've captured and you're ready, slide your thumb up, and the warming LEDs provide the heat that heats the bulk tissue of the lid and softens the myelin. So this is a silicon lid, obviously. It's gonna take a little while to heat up. But what's happening is that the wavelengths of light are being absorbed by chromophores in the lid tissue. And the excitation of those chromophores heats the entire bulk tissue of the lid, including the meibomian glands. So the temperature that you see on the screen is actually recorded at the inner surface of the lid. So the light's coming from the outside, penetrating through the lid tissue, and then we measure and record the temperature on the inside surface. So we know that we're heating the whole lid tissue to the temperature that you see on the screen. About how long would it take for the average patient to have that device there? So when you have a, a normal patient treatment, it takes about five to 10 seconds for it to get up to temperature. Oh, that's it? Yeah, but then you need to do a little more heating in order to get that myelin nice and soft and let it right, liquefy. Right. So our standardized clinical protocol is to do 40 seconds of warming. So you see the melt time has started now. The melt time shows you the time above 38 degrees centigrade. And we do 40 seconds of melt time so during this time, the clinician is watching the patient, monitoring them for, for comfort, just asking them if they're okay, telling them how far they, through the treatment they are. And then when you get to that 40 second time, sliding your thumb down turns off the warming LEDs. And you can then visualize the lid margin through the, the magnifier. Oh, lens. I didn't even notice there was a magnifier yeah. there. So this is the real key to the treatment is that it's personalized. And you can slide down like this. You see now we've got the melt timer. So we're going to go ahead and compress. So when you look through the lens, the clinician can actually see the lid margin, and you can see the myelin that's being expressed. Right, you can see how much you're getting. So you can target the glands that need treatment. You can see how much is coming out and the quality of the myelin that's being expressed. So it's a very personalized, targeted treatment for the patient. I would think you would also be able to train your techs yes. to do this as well. I mean, obviously you would need training. You would need a little bit of clinical acumen to mm -hmm. understand where to go and yeah. how much you're expressing. And there are techs who are who are Absolutely. have the experience and the training yeah. to do that. And we see a lot of practices where that's happening right now. Um, it's state by state. There's variations in what techs can do in the practice. But in most cases, the tech, if they're adequately trained and, and under the supervision of the doctor, they can perform the treatment. Now, how would you say this would differ from current therapies that are available? So the, the mechanism of action is similar. It's heating and compression. Right. There's a few key differences. One is that we use that light-based heat system. So it's penetrating from the outside of the lid inwards, but heating the whole tissue, the whole tissue of the lid. The real key differentiator is the amount of customized control that you have over the treatment. So the clinician is always using their own judgment to determine how hard to squeeze the lid. Can you can you do on my hand what kind of pressure you put on an eyelid? Um, if you open your finger and your thumb like that, uh -huh. I can just capture your web like that. So it's a moderate amount of compression force. Okay. It's a squeeze. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. What the okay. patient feels is a little bit of pressure on the lid, uh -huh. but it's not painful. No. Um, the lid tissue itself isn't that sensitive, and the determination of how hard to squeeze is through what you see through the lens, okay. and by asking the patient if they're comfortable during the treatment. And that's the customization. Like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you can see the glands that are being targeted, you can see the quality and quantity of myelin that's being expressed while you perform the treatment. Well, this guy looks miserable. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a bunch of treatments. So. <laughs> what is the price point for this? So the device, the list price is $12.50. Uh, 12 a little less than 10, what's... 000, sorry, 12050 A little less than what's currently available. Yes. And it also is a much smaller... I mean, this is all you have as opposed that's to... That's correct, yeah. So that's the charging cradle that comes with the device. Huh. And you just drop it in there in between treatments to keep the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to keep the battery topped up. Um, the battery will go all day long. We've done clinics with 15, 16 patients back to back and it, it goes all the way through. Can I try it? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so I put it... Yeah, so you see your thumb does two things on the slider. It goes in and out to apply the force, and when you slide your thumb up, so there's a slider on the top oh, there, okay. and that's what applies the, uh, the heat okay, to actually... Okay, so first I'm going to put it under this lid. Sorry yeah. right here, buddy. That's okay. There you go. You can do this on the upper lid as well? Yeah, you just turn everything over. Okay. Yeah. So and obviously with a real patient, you don't need to manipulate the lid quite so much. Yeah. <laughs> you basically just pull down with your finger, just expose the phonics, and then slide in. Okay. And once you're in, you're going to squeeze with your thumb. There you go. Now, before you do that, come back off a second. You're going to go just a little deeper into the phonics. Okay, I'm not so even you looking want, Yeah, there. you want to be able to see the lid margin through the lens. Oh, so got just it. like yeah. that. Okay. okay, now squeeze. So now you can see that lid margin above that white line in the, yeah. Yeah, in the pad. Okay, yep. Okay, now slide your thumb up. Now you're in the heating phase. Okay. So during this part of the treatment, you're just watching the patient for comfort. You're looking around the side of the device to make sure you're not pushing against the globe. And you basically tell the patient how far through the treatment they are until you get to that 40 second uh, warm. Oh, I should have picked the other eye. That one would yeah, it would have been, been a little warm. <laughs> yeah. I won't stand here for the entire time right. so other people can try, but yeah. this is kind of cool. So the personalization and the customization of treatment is the real key to answer your question. But your um, clock isn't going, Gretchen. Why not? Why is your clock not moving? That's because we didn't get back up to 38 degrees yet. Oh, I see. The melt timer tells you how long you're in that therapeutic temperature I range see. for. Okay, and then it's 40 degrees when, when it gets there. 40 seconds, 40 seconds after you get to okay. that That's correct. Right. point. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. I missed the, uh, I missed that. And obviously, uh, body temperature is a lot higher than silicon yeah. room temperature. So you start from maybe 34, 35, it gets up to 38 very quickly. Would you suggest a warm compress for patients ahead of time to prep them for this? No, you shouldn't need to do that. The whole point of the warming is that you're applying enough heat to liquefy the myelin that's stuck in those gland orifices. Okay. So what we do recommend after the treatment is that patients use a home care regimen to maintain the outcome. Okay. So if you've unblocked those glands and started that myelin moving, in order to keep them moving, you can do warm compresses, lid scrubs, digital massage maybe at home until your next treatment. Okay. Unfortunately, my bombing gland dysfunction is chronic. Right. It tends to be progressive. Uh, if you have factors that are causing that... Um,